let's get the steering hooked up. I gotta hook up the steering link today. The original column's in here. We got the drop axle. We need to put a hoop on it and then we'll add a steering link. I call it a steering link. A lot of guys call it a tie rod. I don't know. That's what I call it. So that's what I'm gonna call it throughout the whole video. Steering link. Let's do it. I haven't touched this thing since I got back from California with it. I really want to get it going. I've just been so busy. I got some knucklehead birds out there. Okay, here's what we got. I never got a hoop put on there. So I'm gonna to have to add the hoop here on the top bolts of the backing plate to go around that. So I can steer up to that pitman arm right there hanging down. See it? So we gotta make a drag link for that. Let's scoot up here. Oh. So we'll have to adjust that pitman arm, get it to the center, hang it down straight, and then we'll make a make a uh, steering link that'll connect. Connect up here to this hoop. Yep. So we've got uh, a rod already that's that's threaded on both ends. It's not like a factory. It's not a factory uh, steering link, but uh, we've got a rod that we're going to use. That's actually uh, a drag link. I call it a drag link here. That's the drag link because it, uh, this one drags the other spindle or wheel. That's what I call it. Some, but some people call this the tie rod, which it does have tie rod ends on it. But I call it the drag link because it gets drug by this one. Anyway, we've got to uh, straighten this one up. We're going to get that one straight on there like that. And then uh, we'll measure... We'll get the hoop put up here. We'll measure this distance here that we need with the tie rods on it. And then we'll get this thing cut down. It was actually made for a drag link. And uh, so it's longer. So I'm gonna have to short it down and do a plug weld on it and get it to where it'll fit in here. It'll be pretty short when we get done here. This is uh, actually a later style Pittman arm. It's got the four little flat spots in it. See them right there at 12, 3, 6, and 9. So, a lot of guys will switch to these so they have a, an actual tie rod end on there that they can bolt in. The factory one had a ball because they had the, the, the earlier style uh, tie rods. So, we're switching to this one. This one's a later one. This is a cross steer. It goes like this on 36 or 37, 38, somewhere around there. You can probably look up that part number 48. That's, I think, is that 36? I can't remember. Anyway, we're going to use this one on there. So we'll have to get these splines lined up, the double splines, to where we can get that thing to hang down perfectly straight like that. And then that'll be the center, and it'll push that tie rod back and forth. So... 
we need to pull this we need to pull this drum off and we'll work on getting that steering hoop in there that cap off there and we can pull that nut spindle nut. Yeah. Looks like it needs some more grease to me. Good thing I'm in there. I can check it all. got any grease in it at all. Okay, so we're going to have to take off these top two nuts that hold this grease shield in. And they're just going to be in from the back and then we'll put that hoop in there. There's the old hooper running. This one's an old sweaty one. So that'll fit in there perfectly. We'll get that one lined up. Get her bolted on good. It's got a bolt in right inside here, so we may have a little bit of trouble getting those tight. But if we have to, we can pull that grease shield off and cut it. Cut the corner out of it so we can get it up in there. Let's get that those off there now. <clears throat> We still got a few things to do on this panel truck. A couple of things we're gonna do is uh, brake lines. We gotta finish our brake lines in the back on the rear axle. And uh, get it all plumbed up. We've got the brake lines up for the front run up here, but we still need to run them to the master cylinder, so. We just got a few few more things we're gonna do. There we go. There you go. Okay, got it. There we are. And there's what the two little bolts look like right there that hold that grease shield in. They also hold the backing plate onto the spindle. I think I'm gonna chase these threads real quick before I run them in there, make them a little bit easier to tighten up. All right, got her all slicked up. I got my old junky tie rod here that I'm gonna use for positioning this. So normally when you think of putting suspension parts on, things that can fall off, what you wanna do is you wanna you would normally go down like that. That way, if that nut ever came loose on there, it wouldn't fall out. Just like in, uh, kind of like they, they do in airplanes, all the airplane stuff, your bolts go in from the front to the back. That way they can't come out if they're being pushed. Uh, the nut could come off, but the bolt wouldn't come out. So normally you would go down like that. I'm gonna turn it upside down. This thing is flat and straight, so I'm gonna turn it upside down. That way that'll give me a lower um, lower angle of that steering arm. It won't be up like this, it'll be down. That'll help prevent some bump steer because as that thing bumps, it what it's doing is it's pulling it. See that? You can see my arm, the pivot point is the elbow. So 
if it bumps and goes up, if it's up high, it's going to pull it back, which is going to pull the steering to the right. So it, if I keep it, the more level I can keep it, the less bump steer it's going to get. So if it gets bumped like that, or if it gets bumped like that, you can see that's a lot more movement. So I'm going to put this in upside down, see if it'll fit. I'm not even going to look at the holes here. I'm just going to find them. There we go. Okay, hands on. Yep. That'll clear everything. Perfect. Okay, I'm just going to put that in there so you guys can see it. Now we've got to get this nut up in here. Let's just show you this. So that nut is going to go right up in there. I don't know if you guys can see that because I can't see the screen, but there's not enough space around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, I'm going to take these and cut the corners off of them. That way I can get to it. All right, let's get this off. We'll go ahead and take those bottom two off. That one, that hoop's on there, so we'll take these bottom two off and pop that off there. There's the other one. There's the grease shield. Alright. These are usually banged up. Uh, you can see they don't have much room in there. And then you've also got a taper to that. So, there's just not a whole lot of room in there for anything other than those square headed keepers right there let's go cut this off and we'll notch that out and come back That's all we needed. Knock that corner off. Do this other one here. There you go. Knock both corners off there. All right, guys. Sorry for the breeze today. Hope it's uh, not too loud here. Oh man, look at that. There we go. Look at that man, it's in there. Oh, oh yeah. Here's what I had to do. Notch that out so I can get to that. If that thing is losing grease and getting out here on then you've got a bad seal. So, <laughs> I've got new seals on my hub, so that should be fine. Should be good to go. There we go. Good to go. We've got a couple extra bolts here. Throw those back in the archives. Got it. Nice. Okay. Back out here. Come on, y'all. Ow. Hit my head. Get our glue on here. Show you guys how I pack some burns. <clears throat> Get our high temp wheel grease. I'm going to put a little glob. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put some down inside this. 
<clears throat> now, I don't know why I got one glove on and not the other one. But, oh, shoot. There went my bearing. <clears throat> Get that stuff out of there. Okay. So, it looks like there's plenty of grease up in it, but I'm going to go ahead and smear it all around. So, I'm just going to take it right here in my palm of my hand. Hopefully, you guys can see that. And just dig that edge. The edge of that bearing edge of that bearing right there is what needs to be filled with grease you need grease all around all those all those little bearing wheels there whatever you call them so I'm just gonna pack it up a little bit more and then I'm gonna smear it all all over the outside of it yeah that's got good grease all over it Make sure those are nice and covered up. Yeah, that looks good. I'll make sure I do the other one too since I've got this one out and it's a little dry. Okay. I set that down. I don't know why. I only wore one glove. That was dumb. You guys wear either wear two gloves or don't wear any gloves at all. This is not always exactly how to do it. Sometimes it's just how to get messy. We'll uh, put that seal back in there. And uh, save all this grease. You never know when you might need it. <coughs> Pop that back up on there. Let's see you look in there. There you go. Thing's hot. Hot dog. I'm gonna take that off. First thing we have to do is we have to turn this steering wheel all the way to one direction. Now let's figure out how many rotations we got. So if we're at 10 o'clock there, one, two, three, four, and a little bit. So that's about, so let's go two inches. So we'll start it right there at about 9.30. Let's go one, two. That should be halfway. I'm going to go ahead and center that. It's got four four revolutions. So I'm going to go ahead and center it. I can see the keyway. In that old steering wheel, you can see the square there for the keyway. So I'm going to go ahead and center it up. This steering wheel is coming off. i got another one back here. So I'll center it up. So that's my center. So now, you come down here. And I know exactly where my box needs to be, but see, that means that my pitman arm, because it's got the double splines in there, is going to be off. I need it to be right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file those. I'm going to file some splines in that, inside that, uh, Hitman arm that way I can line it up wherever I want to. All right, so let's take it and let's go do that. That looks pretty good. See all four of them. Got the splines cutting all of them. Let's go test it. Almost. Just need to slick them up a little bit more. It's starting to go on there. Just need to tighten them up. All right, I filed all those down, cleaned up all the other threads. 
for all the other splines. Let's see if that'll go on there now. Oh, that's a lot better. I think we can... Yeah, let's get the impact. Get that on there, knock it out. Now I've got it pointed straight down, you can see. That's uh that's gonna be the center since we put the since we put the steering wheel in the center, now it's gonna be the shortest distance here for our drag link. Ha <laughs> ha Big Dad's gonna go on there and knock her out here. Okay, hold your ears. Perfect. She's on there, baby. Yep, that was nice and flush. Lock washer's collapsed. It's on there. That's good. Put that one in there. Tighten her up. That's going to give us our... Threads. We're going to measure this sucker right here, and that's going to tell us exactly how long this drag link needs to be. But first, we're going to have to straighten up these wheels and make sure they look straight on here. Okay, you can see that one's turned to the outside, so let's get that pretty straight. Probably need to go ahead and put that wheel on there. Let's just do that real quick. Now let's check to see if it's straight. Probably not. That one looks turned out. That one looks a little bit turned in. We'll look right there. It still looks turned out a little bit. That looks a lot better. See how that looks from the front. Yeah. Yes, that one looks turned in. That one looks turned out, so let's turn it in a little bit. There we go. Yep. That looks better. Now that we got the... Okay, now that we got these on here we can angle them at each other and uh take a measurement yeah 18 and a quarter inches and let's just do 18 and a half Back to your regular schedule programming after this break of Little Caesars. Uh huh. Here's my drag link. This one had two tie rods in on the ends. The ends are threaded. Both ends are threaded. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut a section of this, probably like say right in there, and then take out however much I need here to take out to make it 18 and a half inches. We need 18, so let's see what we got overall. 18 and a half, and we're right at 42 and a half. It's maybe a 30 second over. So, 
18 and 42 is uh, 24. So I need to take 24 inches out of this sucker. Is that right? Oh, yeah. That'd be right, because that'll be 5. And I need uh, 18 and a half, so that's 13 and a half. Right there, so yep, we're going to take 24 inches out of that bad boy. Ooh. That's it. Got a nice little bevel on the end of those. Both of those. That way, when I put them back together, then I'll have a, a rod in the middle. Let's see if we can measure that. That. 18 and 9 sixteenths. It's perfect. We're getting closer. We've almost got to where to, where to slide in there, so one more time going over it. And it should go up in there. And that will be our rod that we'll put up inside there. And then rosette will perfect. We'll drill some holes and then we can rosette weld those. So we can ro weld that to this. That makes sense. The insert. We'll drill those out so we can rosette weld those and then we can turn it down a little bit. Slide down and get it all nice and straight. On to the next bigger size. Drill all them out. Didn't go in there halfway, but all the holes have metal in them. So that's good. Okay. I'm gonna weld that one in there. And then I can take that one on tap it in and get it pushed up in there and weld it on. Straight as a string. Just need to weld that other side up and good to go. Amp it down. Okay, two more rosettes, fill in the gap. Good to go there. Let that cool. Get her cleaned up with painter and put her on there. Yeah. There you go. Straight as a dang string. Perfect. Ready for paint primer. Here's the paint. Let me get some primer. Yeah. 
looking good. We'll give that a couple minutes to set up and then we'll uh, drop the black on it. Here come the black. Install it. Here we go. Wrong way. Perfect. Straight as a dang string. Whoa. Can't can't suck through it because there's a plug in it. <laughs> So, anyway, ready to install. Let's go install. You're gonna have to pretend that I've got two jam nuts on this steering link. Thought I had some for these tie rod ends, but apparently I did not. There it is. Heck yeah. I got that tie rod end sitting right about halfway on here on this on the steering link. And I've got the other one up here off of the steering hoop about halfway up into the halfway up into this uh steering link so that right there will work let's tighten that up y'all don't let me forget i gotta grease these i got the circ in there and i just need to grease them so let's tighten these up and then we'll check the steering wheel here we go all right let's check that steering wheel Oh. oh yeah we got steering look at that awesome y'all a little bit of slop actually not bad at all Let's see if you can see it it's uh actually really tight yeah there's a little bit maybe a little bit we'll do a little adjustment on the box once we get the steering wheel in there we're going to pull this uh, tube off here. Sorry for the wind. We're going to pull this tube off here and paint all that all black and get that other steering wheel, other stock steering wheel in there. And that should be good to go. We still got a bunch of stuff left to put in here. We got spare tire mounts, we got radiator hoses, and we got some extra wood. But we still got some work ahead of us so we're gonna keep working on this steering box is in it's mounted we filed a little recap here so the steering box was already mounted in we ended up pulling a later model probably 35 36 i can't remember what the uh, 48 prefix is i think it's 35 it may be 36 as well so we filed all the double splines on the pitman arm to fit on the 34 steering box in there and then we got it put on and we shortened down the steering link to match what we needed with the hoop that we added so we've got steering now that's awesome it just needs an alignment which i haven't done that's just a matter of putting a tape on it and checking to see where it's at but the good thing is steering column is ready to go all we need to do now is pull it apart pull the old steering wheel off of it 
and then we'll end up uh, putting the, the new used steering wheel on there with the horn rod. We're going to use the stock horn rod because it has the headlight controls in it. So we're going to do that. That'll be for another video. So right now, I'm just happy we got steering suckers. We got steering in the Pomona panel, man. It's going to be awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. See you later. Thank you.